can you use an Arduino development board in a commercial product? Or more importantly, should you use one in a commercial product? And if not, what should you use instead for mass production? Those are the questions I'm going to be answering for you in this video. The simple answer is yes, you can use an Arduino in a commercial product since Arduino is open source. So we're done, right? Of course not. The real question you should be asking yourself is should you use one in your product? Well, as the name implies, development kits like Arduino are primarily designed for development and early prototyping and not for mass production. So why shouldn't you use them for production? Well, it generally comes down to four reasons. Cost, size, power, and availability. An Arduino Uno cost about $20. If you instead designed your own custom PCB with the same functionality, it would cost only a couple dollars. For example, the ATmega328P is the microcontroller used in the Arduino Uno. Well, this chip only costs a little over a dollar at low quantities. There are also lower cost microcontrollers available with similar or better performance. The other main chip on the Uno is a USB to UART converter chip. This can be eliminated for production design since the ability to program via a USB port using the Arduino IDE is no longer required. This just leaves a few really low cost components such as a linear regulator, a crystal for the microcontroller, and any connectors. The passive components like resistors and capacitors, well, those only cost pennies. If you were going to replicate an Arduino exactly, then you would also, of course, have the cost of the PCB itself and the cost of soldering on the components. Well, however, since you're already going to be likely to still require a custom PCB for other parts of your circuit, this cost will be absorbed into the cost of your custom PCB. Regardless of the development kit, they will always be considerably more expensive than designing your own custom PCB solution. The other downside to embedding a development kit like an Arduino into your product is the large size. For example, the Arduino Uno is really quite large. It measures about 2.7 inches by 2.1 inches. And they were just never really designed with small size as a priority. The Arduino Nano board is considerably smaller and it measures around 1.8 inches by 0.7 inches, but even that size will be restricted for many products. For instance, if your product is a smartwatch, then obviously even the Nano's relatively small size isn't going to be feasible. In addition to their large size, Arduino boards are also likely to include functions or features that you don't require for your specific product. These features can significantly increase the board size. For example, on the Arduino Uno, it uses a large USB type B connector, but you'll probably want to instead use a newer, smaller USB C connector. If you don't require these features for your product, then you're better off without the additional size and weight that they may add to your product. Not only do any unnecessary functions add cost and size to your product, but they also increase the power consumption. This isn't really critical if the product is powered from an external power source, but it becomes really important for battery operated products. For example, the USB to UART chip used on, on the Arduino Uno, it can consume an extra 20 milliamps of current when active just by itself. For a product running from a small battery, this can have a massive impact on the battery life. Whether it's due to the additional cost, size, or power consumption, it, it rarely makes sense to include unneeded functions in your product. Also, since the Arduino is not really intended for production applications, you may run into availability issues when trying to purchase them in high volume probably won't be an issue when manufacturing hundreds of units or maybe even thousands of units, but at the typically much higher manufacturing volumes, you may run into issues sourcing so many Arduino boards on a consistent basis. All of that being said, there are exceptions though where an Arduino may be a viable production solution. If your product is larger sized, has a relatively high retail price, is not battery powered, and doesn't need a custom PCV, then there's no good reason you couldn't begin selling your product with an Arduino inside. 
although eventually you'll want to migrate to a custom design to increase your profit margins and then also to reduce any potential availability issues. Now, despite the large variety of Arduino boards available, as I've discussed, in most cases they can't be used in an embedded design. However, in such cases, it's still possible to stay within the Arduino ecosystem while using a customized board. The simplest option is to just embed the exact same Arduino microcontroller into the custom board. But you can also select from other microcontrollers, many of which are more powerful than the AT Mega series used in Arduino while still being able to use the same Arduino IDE. One example is the ESP32, which is available as a development board. It's also available as a pre-certified module that you can then just solder on your custom PCB, or you can purchase just the bare ESP, ESP32 microcontroller chip. Well, the ESP32 is an order of magnitude more powerful than the AT Mega, and also offers both Wi-Fi and Bluetooth functionality built in and you can still use the Arduino IDE to program it. The price of the ESP32 is incredibly affordable and it offers a fantastic migration path from early prototyping to mass production. Another option is the popular STM32 series of 32-bit microcontrollers, which are cheaper and more powerful than the AT Mega. They also offer the STM32L series, which have lower power consumption. The STM32 can also be programmed using the Arduino IDE. So don't let your fear of leaving the safety of the Arduino IDE limit you to only the simple 8-bit AT Mega microcontrollers. I've got several in-depth articles on my website on how to use the Arduino IDE with both the ESP32 and STM32 that I'll link to in the description below. If you like this video, be sure to check out this video here where you will discover the criteria you need to consider when selecting the microcontroller for your product.